All righty, guys, welcome for Friday. We got a special guest today. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Jesse Hantla. I am the agency manager for FFL Primetime, as you can see right there. Um, back to back Hall of Fame producer. So if you guys don't know what that means, it means that you've helped over 400 families each year. Um, and that's why we have these trainings weekly and we plug in together all the time. So that way, if you're a brand new agent, we can take you from, I'm just learning my script to helping as many families per week so you guys can reach your goals. I'm really excited to have uh, one of our own agents here on the call today, Miss Diana Vargas. Hello. Hello. All right. <laughs> so, um, Diana, for those of you that don't know, Diana, um, I guess let's get a little background story. Like how long you've been at FFL, how long you've been in insurance, what's your background look like prior to getting here? Yeah. Okay. So how long I've been uh, with FFL, I got my license back in November of last year. Um, I did not start working on the on insurances right, right away. Um, I do remember going to a sales conference in Chicago just because I wanted to learn more about the business. And right when I started, I had just gotten my real estate license. So someone came up to me and said, do you want to go for the insurance license? I give it to you for free. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Why not? Let's just go for it. So uh, I started studying for it. I went to the sales conference. I really liked what I saw there. Then I went to convention in February of last year. I was still not selling insurance by then, but I wanted to know more about the business. And then right after conference is that I really started like um, making sales so or protecting families. So a background on me is that as I'm sure the uh, 15 people here, I would say they never thought about becoming an agent or a broker. I actually wanted to go into the medical field. I, I wanted to be a dentist when I was a little girl. And then I have a conditions in my eyes where I'm almost blind out of one eye. So I work in the field for like over 14 years. And then I was told by my boss, I don't think you should become a dentist because you, you're almost blind. So then I wanted to go for PA. Um, <laughs> and um, you know, I was a single mom. Uh, I was going for the medical school. Then my son become, uh, he, he was very ill at two weeks born. He had uh, bacterial meningitis. So he, I, I decided to stay home as a, as a stay home mom. And then I got into uh, network marketing after that, just because I wanted to bring my own income into the household. I've never been the, the woman who just stay at home and you know, uh, raise kids, that's just not me. Um, so I went for network marketing. I was sort of successful in network marketing. So I was uh, a full-time job office manager and I was doing network marketing. And I, I generated about $18,000 a month in network marketing and I quit my job. And that's when I started just basically the, the entrepreneur life, if you can call it like that. And, and then my business went down the, down the drain in network marketing. Um, I had some savings. So I said that I was not going back to a nine to five. Hell no. And then, uh, and then that's what I, when I was looking for options, I went to the, uh, I went to the real estate school for, for a full week. And then they offered me to get, just do the license for insurance. And I was like, why not? And then I'm here a few months after that. Nice. That's an extensive background and a lot of adversity that I think maybe not specifically or exact details, but the bumps in the road of things that kind of take us on and off course and kind of lead us to the direction of where we're at today. It's pretty cool to hear where you're at. So if you guys can relate to maybe some of the adversity, maybe being a single mom and making sure you got income in the house and just, you know, navigating which which road to take if you can relate to that drop a two in the chat um now so did you end up getting your real estate license or you were like i'm in class and then i just jump over to life insurance 
Yeah, for some reason, um, well, I schedule my test to get the real estate was still pending. Because when I when I went to the sales conference that I heard what the insurance industry was all about, I was like, I think this is what I need to go for. So um, what happened to me is that I realized that I was putting many eggs in the, into different baskets and I was like working into marketing for different companies since I have a social media. I was doing um, car accidents. I was doing marketing for cosmetic centers. I was doing a bunch of things. And then I was doing uh, my network marketing still. And I was studying for the real estate. And I was like, no, 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 hold on. You need to focus in, I'm sorry if my English is not like, some words are gonna sound weird, but so uh, you need to focus in one thing because otherwise you're gonna keep on putting eggs into different baskets and you're not gonna come up with the goals that you really want to accomplish. So no, I still have my real estate license pending to take the test. So it sounds to me like it was focusing on um, things with a higher intention. So maybe to stay better on track, right? Now, since you've started with FFL, cause you know, I've pretty much witnessed the full journey. Um, and now to where you're at, if we fast forward almost to a year, um, but you haven't been writing business for that full year. So, I mean, it's probably what six to eight months writing business. Would you say Hold where that. you're at now? Yeah. Hold on one second. Señor Felipe, está bien si lo llamo después porque tengo a una, estoy en una llamada con unos agentes y lo llamo más tarde. Sí. Sí, no se preocupe. Sí, perfecto. Lo tengo, lo tengo pendiente y está en mi schedule. Nada más que termine, yo lo llamo. Ok, listo. Bueno, gracias. Ok. Sorry, that was one of, one of my clients. And that comes first. There we go. And bilingual, so that's definitely helpful. You've helped me in a ton of situations because I might look Hispanic, but I definitely don't speak the language. So, um, when you first got here till now, you know, what would you say is like the main different, the, the main factor of what's been different from when you first started till now to where you're able to help like say 10, was it 10, 11, 12 families this week? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's awesome. Good job. Uh, thank you. So that was not actually, uh, the name of this call was not supposed to be the name that was given. I try to give it another another name, which was like, uh, uh, what was it, Jesse? Get your shit together is what you wanted to name it. Yeah, get yeah, get your shit together. So that's basically what the reason why I wanted to call it like that is because honestly, I'm not here to tell you guys how to sell ten uh, or how to protect ten families in a week because we all know that. It's just a matter of you coming into these calls. It's just maybe to know a little bit more about a single mom who's working her ass off and making things happen. But we all know how to make shit happen. We just don't know. We haven't realized that in order to make those things happen, we have to get to work. So basically, uh, the what has changed since I started, it's realizing that maybe my lifestyle is not the same as probably uh, Drew's or Jesse's because I'm a mom, I have two kids and my schedule is a little bit different. So I needed to figure things out to make them work for myself. And that took time. And the only, the only way you have, you're gonna figure that out, it's by failing and by uh, getting to work and to get yourself a system that is gonna work for you. So um, I had made some notes because I wasn't really ready for the call, <laughs> but I do love uh, personal development. So I was listening to some personal development this morning and I had three questions for you guys that I would like to for you to write it down and really ask yourself these three things. And the first one was, do you know exactly what's your why? And the second one is, how many of you have clear what your goals are? And the third one was, how many of you know why you're joining this business? 
And I really would like for you to answer that to yourself because so many, so many, like most of the time we just get into something and we're just desperate to have results, but we don't really know why we're doing that. And the first thing we need, we have to find out what's our why. And we all have different whys. My why is my kid who's screaming right now in the background. <laughs> <laughs> one of them so that's one of my why and that's the reason why I wake up every day and my life is completely different to many of the other agents here and I needed to figure it out a way that this was going to work for me in order to support them in order to give them the life that they deserve in order to give myself the life that I deserve so um that's number one then two once you find out your why you have to set yourself a goal and you need to know that you need to get obsessed with this business in order to make the obsession um, a possession. And that's something I heard this morning. Once you have an obsession, on, once you have an obsession, it becomes a possession. So once you have become obsessed with this business, you're going to have control of your business because you know, you're going to know exactly what you have to do, which is get your ass to work and make things happen. And um, once you have your obsession with this business, you're not going to get so easily distracted because I was so like so distracted with so many things because I didn't know like this was not my, my obsession. Uh, and I needed to to become my obsession, obsession, still becoming my obsession every day through a system of getting on on dials every day on having a schedule on having a dial time on making it a priority and and get to work every single day without an excuse so um yeah i lost track of everything i've said if nobody's taking notes you guys are missing out <clears throat> these these are some nuggets massive massive things so know your why make sure you've got clear goals and then why are you joining the business once you know your why be obsessed because with your obsession becomes a possession. Is that correct? Did I get that right? Yeah. Guys, guys, this is powerful because, you know, I hate to say it. I've even caught myself doing this, you know, over the course of my career in phases where we just start winging things. You know, we wake up and we're like, okay, um, I don't have leads. Okay. Um, I see everybody logs on and everyone says good morning on the group me, but I'll get there. Uh, I'm just going to go with the flow. I'll see what happens. And then the end of the week comes and Diana, have you ever had weeks like that where you just kind of go with the flow and then Wednesday hits and everyone's putting in their numbers and submitting them. And then yeah. what, what's kind of, what, what's usually the, the sentence, like you're thinking in your head or like the message you you'll tend to send me is. Yeah, well, the thing is that once you see other people having results and you're not, you tend to compare yourself. Yeah. And that's the worst thing you can do in this business. Once you start comparing yourself, you're bringing yourself down. And once you're bringing self, yourself down, you're letting your emotions get to you and you're, you're not going to make things happen. So in order for that not to happen, you need to have control of your, of your emotions. And the only way you're going to have control of your emotions is to see your own results. I don't need to see Jesse's results for me to get motivated. The only way I'm going to get motivated is by me having my own results. So in order for that to happen, I know for a fact now, like today, that I need to work every single day without an excuse, even if it's 1 a.m. and I'm dialing California, because that's the time I have when, when my kids are sleeping. That's my situation. Uh, like nobody has to tell me you have to dial California at 1 a.m. To, to make a sale, because I know that's what I need to do to make things happen. So yeah, definitely not comparing yourself and you need to get to work in order to see results. And I'm assuming what you mean is you're already on an appointment with a client when it's 1 a.m. for you, right? Yeah, I have, <laughs> like, I have learned to schedule. Like I have to schedule myself. It's not like I still make uh, call to close sales, but for me, it's not the same because if I have a client that I know I can 
I can close when I'm on a call with him, I'm going to try my best to close that client. If I, if I can schedule the client and have my schedule set for the next few days, I'd rather do that because I'm in control of what I can do with my day because it's not the same for me. My son is hyperactive. He's a medicine. Sometimes he wake up in a good mood. Sometimes he's all over the place. Uh, and then my day goes based on that where I have to control my emotions that I'm not going to let those things get to me in a way that I'm going to transmit that to my clients. It, rather, I'm just going to do something to have a good day and, and to make my emotions. And that's what I'm going to transmit to my clients. But I have to do something about that. So sometimes I spend my morning listening to some personal development sometimes to music to relax me and sometimes whatever it takes so if my day has to start at 11 a.m because my emotion is not there to deal with clients I'm just going to start my day at 11 a.m if if there's a day that I had a good morning with my son then my morning is going to start earlier but what I'm trying to say is that you know, my morning sounds not, I'm not the same as that, probably every other agent out there. And I, and it took time for me to understand that because sometimes I wanted to push myself to dial and make a sale when my emotions were all over the place. And then I was seeing that the results were not the ones that I wanted to get. That was a nugget right there. If you guys missed that, the emotions were in the wrong place and they weren't getting the results. So discipline, schedule, but what I was kind of getting at is like, well, a lot of times when we're, we're when winging it and we're trying to figure it out, and that's cool too. It's because like, there's so many other types of jobs, I guess you could call it, or careers where we don't really have the focus. We don't really have the opportunity of the flexibility either to where, you know, we can work our life around that. You know, if you're willing to do what it takes, like you're saying, sometimes I got to work late. Might be 10, 11, 12, one o'clock in the morning and I'm closing some somebody on the West Coast. But the people that do that tend to win more. And I've noticed there's like been a gear shifted in the last probably few months on you in regards towards that, where you're you're getting very, very obsessed with building as well as making sure you're helping multiple families if not per day, but, you know, getting to 10 as your benchmark every single week, um, which in relativity, if you continue doing that, you're going to for sure be on hall of fame next year. So it will be fun walking across the stage. Um, who knows, might be the first agent out of, uh, FFL prime time to get their jacket. So, so gentlemen, ladies, <laughs> get ready. Yeah, well, Diane is coming for it. Yeah, that's definitely a goal of mine, but there's still a lot of work to do. And pe people need to understand that there's a learning curve. And sometimes we have to learn that it's a process you have to go through uh, in order to get to where you are. And sometimes we just join something and you might have the gift that you're really good at it. And it just, you know, um, you get it and you connect with the clients right away and you make the, the things happen right away. And sometimes other people need to understand that it's going to take more time for you to get there. And, and you have to be willing to go through the process to get there. Now, what happens to so many people is that they're not willing to go through that process and then just quit too yeah. early. They quit too early on themselves and they don't, they're not quitting. They're not quitting on prime time. They're not quitting on FFL. They're just quitting on themselves. So when you get to understand that you're just quitting on yourself, then you give more value to the process. To the process, because you need to understand that it's a uh, it's a growth that you have to to you know uh, incorporate in into a something completely new that you're learning. Because obviously, I had no experience when it came to insurance. Um, I, I I found more. Um, I'm more comfortable selling to Spanish clients because that's my first language. So why am I going to push into selling to English when I can sell in Spanish and probably have the same results? Obviously, if I have a, a client in English, I'm going to sell to that client. I'm going to explain to the client the whole process. But I, I found myself 
selling more in Spanish and it's okay. You know, you still have to find out what works for you. And, and so many people are not willing to go through the process to find out what really works for you in this business. Yeah, it's like first weekend, you get yelled at three times and you're all, oh, this isn't for me, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, well, there's a lot of mindset behind it. Yeah. And there's a lot of personal growth. And I had to learn this through the network marketing because network, network marketing is completely different. It's selling, I was selling shampoo for a living and I was recruiting girls and and recruiting people on on cold messages where I learned that that was not the right process to do it but there's a, a whole mindset behind the business in sales you're gonna have to work on that every single day and once again not many people are willing to work on them on their mindset um, every single day so if you're not feeding something that it's going to give you the results you want to get, how come you're going to have those results? So mindset, mindset, it's everything in this business from, I mean, that's just my opinion. It's not the transcript. It's not anything. It's just mindset and hard work. I love it. So mindset, consistency, hard work. Now, in regards towards your system, um, maybe not breaking into the details about what you're doing, but like, what are some of the tools that are helping you stay really efficient when it comes to um, like what you know now to what you potentially were learning in the, when you first started, like what's, what's changed any new tools, new systems, something that's helping you just stay more efficient um, in regards towards maybe underwriting by yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, on that Consistency is number one. If you don't have consistency, you're not going to have a system. And then the other thing for me has been to learn how to be, be more organized in terms of my schedule. So I have to have a schedule every single day where I have clients schedule every single day. And then what I do, if a client does not answer me, I automatically schedule an appointment for that client into my schedule, even if the client did not answer me. So I am going to for sure get in contact with the client. If it's not next day, then I schedule him for another week. And then I give him, I give him two more weeks until the client answer me. But I'm a big believer that a lead is a lead. And if a lead is not resolved, then you're just giving up on that client. So uh, follow-ups is big on my schedule. <laughs> um, if you have shown me some sort of interest in life insurance, you bet your ass I'm coming after you for life insurance. So yeah. Uh, definitely creating your own system, whatever works for you. Because once again, uh, each of us are different. Each of us have different lifestyles and schedule and circumstances. So whatever, if it works for you, you have to stick to it. But in order to find out what works for you, you have to get to work. Have to get to work and be willing to fail and just keep going, right? Um. Man, I, I feel like I've got a lot of good points and nuggets here, and it's just a really good reminder of what to do. Um, when it comes to this business, would you guys all probably agree what she's saying? It's not very complicated. Would you all agree? Let's see some like, see some sevens in the chat. Some sevens in the chat. And it's actually kind of funny because my sweatshirt says it. And it says simple, not easy, simple, but not easy. That's exactly what this business is, guys. You run the system. So Diana, let's break it down. You're a brand new agent. What are like the three most important steps to making make sure you got success? You've got to do what? Is there a certain? <laughs> okay, so we, we buy leads. Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> we buy the leads. We do what? Well, first you have to get your license. Okay. Well, and you're licensed. You, get, you got your you license. You have to get on boot camps. And then you have to go on big bone dials and hear some other people dialing. Then you have to get a, on, on buying leads and work on those leads. 
You bring up a good point. Bing bong dials. Why is working on a live dial team? What is, what is working on a live dial team helped you with? Listen, I am not the best example to bring up on Bing bong dials because I'm usually hiding. Um, I've always been super shy and, and introverted. And I'm not here to tell you this is what I have to do. Everyone is different. But I do remember when I started that I wasn't even selling insurance. I will get on primetime dials, which but was the name back in, back in time. And I would just hear the whole day how they would dial. That's what I did when I first started. And I was like, you know, learning a lot and catching up from different uh, calls on, on things to 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 learn and say and then some other people would say like you have learned so much in such a short amount of time and it was because I was I was just uh, taking my time to listen instead of just going and throwing myself out there I was just catching up and, and listening and learning on the on the live dials and that really helped a lot that was huge I remember that prime time live dials well, we got some good news. We might be bringing that back. So, I'm excited for Dial Teams and what it's been, because um, there's I see so many faces on here, and there's been so many people that I've had one-on-one -on -one conversations with. They're like, dude, if it wasn't for the Live Dial Team, I would have probably quit. I would probably be back at my last job, and I'm so thankful that I found this, or I found an office locally to where I can grow. So plugging in super, super important, buy the leads, dial the leads, get relentless with your follow-up system. Um, you know, anything that you want to go ahead and leave the team with, um, maybe something that would potentially help them from going from maybe zero to one or uh, maybe like three families to 10 plus families a week. What's the, the big thing? I would say you have to make the decision. Because until you make that decision, you're just going to keep on jumping into calls every week, looking for motivation and looking for someone to tell you this is how it works when you already know how it works. But if you haven't said yourself to get out there and you haven't decided this is what you want to do, it's not going to work. And I like to be as straightforward and clear as possible because Anyone is going to sit here and tell you they're making 50, they're protecting 50 families a month. But if you haven't made the, the decision that, that this is what you want to do, regardless of whatever comes your way, then it's simply not going to happen. We all have obstacles. We all have struggles. Every day, something is going to come up into your life and your schedule. And you're going to be like, oh, this happened today. I'm not going to dial today because this is happening because my son is throwing up all over the living room. And I feel like not dialing today. And that's what happened two days ago where my son was throwing up all over the living room. My sofa was full of vomiting and everything. And I still get back to, to dialing because I have made my decision. This is what I want. Uh, to do. And I want it to happen for myself. Nobody has to tell me it's just a regular day. Uh, it's going to happen. You don't have to dial today. You can go back tomorrow. No, get your shit done, clean the floors and get back to dialing because that's what you have to do in order to see results. So unless you make that decision, things are not going to happen unless you get out there and start dialing and have people cursing at you and say things and you to get the mindset that this is going to happen anywhere. Because when I used to sell uh, dental treatments for a living, I used to get clients in, in a bad day, but it's not about, it's not about you. It's about going, what's going on with them on their every single day and they're not going to call you and you're not going to call them on a, on a good day every day but once you learn it's not about you and it's about the client everything everything changed but this is a mindset you have to work every single day but sometimes we're not willing to work on that mindset so with that said <laughs> it's all about making the decision this is what you want to do then once you have made that decision set yourself a goal you don't have to set yourself the goal to starting at 30 families a month. You can start by five families a month. Once you have made the five families a month, a month, then set yourself a bigger goal. 
have an appointment. So set yourself a bigger goal to go for 10 families a month. And then you go, um, you keep on growing, but it's your uh, process. It's your journey. It's nobody else's. So once you have made the decision, this is what you want to do and you want this to happen, things are going to start happening. But get, your, get yourself to work. I love it. Decision, set a goal and get to work and get shit done. Right. And when we get shit done, what's one of the helpers for you? There might be like, cause I know some people are like, hold on. Apparently buzz wants to say good job. Buzz, you want to say good job, Diana? She's doing good. All right. My cat apparently is shy now. So buzz was saying good job in his, in his own language, but everyone's got something that they do, whether it's a workout, it's a supplement, it's a vitamin, it's a, a channel on YouTube. What's something in your day that you say you've implemented maybe within the last year, the last few months, that's really helping you maybe in your own head, get a little bit of an edge, anything? Um, I've done a lot of self work. Um, you know, to me has been that, um, you know, I've seen some some other people in this business accomplish so many things, and life for me has been such a roller coaster when it comes to studying and working and having kids and being on my own and, you know, going through so many things that I'm like, well, but I'm seeing other people accomplishing so much, I'm not di- I'm not different than these other people. So if they're if they're doing it, why not me? This is what I want for myself. And I'm loving myself enough to understand that there's a, a, you know, a curve of growth and a lot of work that I have to implement on myself to get there. And I'm willing to go through the process to get there. That's powerful. And you've got an appointment coming up, so I don't want to take up too much more of your time. But guys, like, is anybody have any questions? If you'd like to unmute, maybe ask Diana some questions, um, have a little bit of Q&A for a few minutes. Um, but yeah, I could, I can relate not children, but I woke up yesterday with both of my cats had thrown up on the floor and I was like, Oh, this is a good way to start the day. I love it. And, and even better yet, my robot, you know, the little vacuum robots, it had already cleaned the path. So it was all up inside the vacuum. I was like, Oh, this is just a triple whammy of great way to start the day. Yeah. Those of you with dogs. No. Okay. Um, anybody want to unmute? Before we get sidetracked talking about vomit too much through this call, like I, I've got a lot of notes here. Um, and you know, we, we know each other quite well, but like, I feel I've learned a lot about business, about how you're processing things that things I've never even knew. So this is actually pretty cool. Um, you know, cause guys, like if you really hear it, there's a system work on yourself, have self-love, have a daily discipline schedule make a goal, set your why. When you have your, when you have your why, set your goal. And like she said, it might just be helping one family. It might just be helping one family, dude. And the craziest thing I can, Diana, remember, I, I think I remember this, the, the time you booked your first appointment. What was it like first picking up the phone and like, then to the first time you booked your first appointment, what was that feeling like? I was terrified to pick up the phone. <laughs> I was terrified. I didn't know what I was going to say. <laughs> and and then the first time I went into a new home, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. They're, yeah. they're going to think I'm one of these like uh, religious, uh, how do you call that? A Mormon or With, something. Yeah, these people. Or the like, Jehovah oh, Witness. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> knocking on the doors what am i gonna do but once again like i mean there's if there's no if you're not uncomfortable you're not growing and even on this call being here i'm uncomfortable i'm really uncomfortable and it's part of my growth but if you're not willing if you haven't made the decision to get uncomfortable meaning it it means that you haven't made the decision to do this business Mm -hmm. yeah you're doing you're doing good and, you know, I could hear it at first, you're a little shaky, but then you get in the rhythm and you're just, you just unleash the fury on us. I was like, dang, yeah, dude, like I'm English sitting here just, got- yeah, my English even gets better. 
I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm impressed. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think it, it all it all goes back to you. It all go it goes back to having if you have made the decision. It's like when we're losing weight. If you made the decision that you want to lose weight, you're gonna get impressed that you're gonna do whatever it takes to get to your goal. If it's ten pounds, you're gonna get to the ten pounds once you have set your mind to get to those ten pounds. Yep. And it goes the same with this business. If you have if you have set your mind, I remember I wanted to get my breast implants. Uh, I wanted to get a, a surgery, okay, uh, that I've been waiting for for so long, and I needed to I needed to pay eight thousand five hundred dollars. And come on, I'm a single mom. I pay all the bills on my own, and it's hard enough. Miami rent is not cheap. You can ask Jesse. Um, Oh, it's not, it's not bad at all, guys. Like, no, nah, it's, it's not bad. And then, and then I set my mind to, to, to do the, you know, set the goal to, to pay the surgery within, I think it was less than two months, um, including all the, the bills and I, and I accomplished it. And, and it's all part of like, whatever you set your mind to accomplish, you're going to do it. But most of the time we just get in here. We just say, oh my God, yes, I'm going to get back to work. And the next day you're like, I don't feel like dialing today. It's not going to happen. And you don't do it. Why? Because your mind was not there. You just said it out loud. You didn't make action on it. So. So what I was, what I'm trying to ask is when you went from your first appointment booked, what was that feeling like? Scared to happy, right? And then. Your first appointment, like you ran when you got your first family helped, what was that like? It was amazing. It was yeah. an amazing. Yeah, it was an amazing feeling, but still my mind was not there. Like it happened. I was like, oh my God, yes. And then I'm going for the next family. And then it was months like that when I would, I would sell, I would sell now. I will protect one family. I will protect two or three. But you come to re realization that your mind is not there when you're seeing other people protecting 10, 15, 20, 30 families a month and you're on five. And you're not different than that, that person who's protecting 20 and 25 and 30. There's no difference between you and that person. So the only difference is that that other person had made the, the decision and it's putting the work. Yep. That's the only difference. The script is not the difference. You're not the difference. People don't see me. They don't see that Jesse's ugly and I'm pretty. They don't see that. Oh, no, they that's definitely see. true. That's definitely <laughs> true. Um, yeah, so it's not the advantage. It's it's the mindset being told no more. The work gets the results. So yeah, it was like. I I was telling this to Laura, which is one of my agents, and she's amazing. And I was talking to her yesterday, and I was just telling her the more I, the more I'm having this results, the, the more I come to the conclusion that it's all about staying consistent and putting in the work. Because even when you talk to a client and something you said you feel it didn't work, you're like, okay, let me just try something different with the next client and see if it works. And then that worked and you're like, there you go. That's what I have to keep on saying because that worked for me. And it's you build your language. You build being comfortable on the phone with the clients and, and you stay to what worked for you. And that's what it's going to keep on getting to work for you. But the only, work, the only way to find out what really works for you, it's by doing it. And I used to ask the same questions that everyone asked. I'm like, what leads are you working? What are you saying? What's your transcripts? It's not about the leads. It's not about the transcripts. It's not about what you're saying. It's about you getting to work and do it over and over again and see what really works for you and making it your own. That's powerful. So there's no right way to do it. It's just, you got to figure out your flow and what's going to work best for you. I think if you guys take away anything from that, that's a nugget right there. Because everybody is different. We're all unique in our own ways, right? 
Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I'm happy that I'm different from you guys. But the copy paste, let me steal a little bit from what Diana said. Let me steal a little bit from what Drew said. Let me steal what Carlos said and Laura. And that's the thing about live dials that you can pick up on that. You can absorb it like, like a sponge. Mm -hmm. um, this has been an awesome call. Is there anything you'd like to leave the team uh, so that way we're not late or you're not late for your next appointment? Guys, I've said everything. What else do you want me to leave? <laughs> <laughs> I've already said everything, I think. I mean, yeah. It's just get your shit together and get to work. And I have to say it like this because in reality, I had to like talk back to myself and said and said to myself, get your shit to get your shit together. I'm not gonna go back to a nine to five. I know this business work. I know what I have to do for the business to work. So why you're not doing it? It's just a decision to get on it and do it. That's mm -hmm. that's the only thing it takes. Sometimes we even have the, the leads and we don't even call the leads. We don't even work on the leads just because we haven't made the decision that this is what we want to do and we want to work on those leads. So. Uh, guilty as charged. I've definitely been there, bought a stack of leads. I'm like, ah, don't want to work them. And then I'm seeing everybody else sell. and I'm like, all right, it's time to buckle down. And you just got to get in the zone. So whether it's plugging in with the team, just get going and keep coming back. Just keep moving. All right. Well, I'm proud of you. You've definitely um, made a big head wave. And I think we're just getting started because mm -hmm. I think you're starting to see the momentum. And like you said, when I'm starting to stay consistent, I thought you were going to end the sentence and say, I, I'm staying consistent. And now that I'm seeing I can do 10 in a week, because this is the thing I noticed is like you, you've probably had some really big days, like where one day you just go crazy bananas, right? Mm -hmm. And then like there's three or four or five days that lead up to that. You're just like getting wrecked on the phones, right? Yeah, I'm still, I'm still, I'm, I'm doing something and this might not work for everybody, but I'm, uh, I'm dialing right if I, I'm I'm setting my mind to a goal of at least one cell a day at least one cell a day having a cell a day doesn't mean I'm gonna stop but if I have made at least one cell a day at least I feel like I have I have said I have accomplished my goal for the day you know and that gives you the motivation to keep on going to the next day even if, because some, like the other day, I didn't have a sale for the entire day I was diving. It was a Saturday. And I made the sale, I think it was 12. I think it was a 12 at night yeah. in California. And I felt so good that, you know, I have made the sale after being smashed all day on the phone. And then I was like, let's do it all over again today, tomorrow, you know? But unless you decide, you, you know, yourself that you have to go at least once a day, you're not going to continue the whole day, even if you're getting, if you're getting smashed, especially. Yeah. So once you said, and it, com it comes back to the mindset, once you have set your mind that you have a goal for the day, then it makes a difference. Absolutely. So I that love has that. really worked for me. And, and so. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. What? <laughs> so we're just getting started. So it's like yeah, you said, one per day. A lot of a lot of work <clears throat> to be done still. But I really I, feel like like Stacy just put just one more. Um, just one more. And like Drew said, uh, look at the leaderboards and ask if Beanbog works. I'm a firm believer. Like get plugged in, but get like get plugged in. And a lot of times, Diana, like you've probably been guilty of this. I'm I'm going to maybe throw you on the bus a little bit. Um, I don't care. But unmuting, unmuting does what? It helps you do what? Unmuting um, gets you out of your comfort zone and it helps you grow. So it makes you, make, it, it makes you get better on the phones. Yeah. And, and I've heard this all the time. What happens with me is that my cells are in Spanish. So yeah. most of the time, none of you understand me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. If you're in Spanish, we can, we will let that slide. Cause I can't help you with that. There might right. be someone in here that can any, any, 
Anybody speak in Spanish here? Like super high ticket. Looks like Diane is the boss here. No, uh, Laura. Laura. Laura, Laura, it's Mexican. So this is what happens with me. Most of my clients are Mexican. <laughs> and I started and I started. I don't think I don't think Mexicans like my accent because I'm Cuban. So it's funny because now you hear me in Spanish and I I sound sort of Mexican and Laura and Laura was laughing at me. <laughs> she was like, yeah, I was giving her crap yesterday because she was, I was like, yeah, there you go. There. Whatever you say. Mexican so I've learned, I've learned that. I don't know if that happens with uh, country people that you have to sound a certain way and they oh, feel yeah. comfortable with your accent. I think Mexicans are the same way in Spanish, but I've learned that by keep on trying with the Mexican people my Mexican people I now love so much <laughs> but it's been a struggle at first I don't think they they like me because of my accent in Cuban accent even my Cuban accent is not that strong but you know I don't even think it takes even uh, Jesse to tell you this is the way you have to talk you're gonna figure it out as you go the more clients you talk to the more you're gonna find out how you have to talk to the clients once you even start talking to the client at first the tonality the way you have to refer to the client how comfortable the client feels with you and these are things you learn as you go the more you practice the more experience you have the more it's gonna you're gonna get it you know and it has happened to me in spanish so i don't know if it happens the same way in english oh it does it's what's <clears throat> It's what's happening to me in Spanish. So, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I remember this. I was on a travel trip in Kansas and I was calling people. Hey, John, this is Jesse. They're like, boy, what you like now? now? Like with a super heavy. I mean, we're, we're talking Midwest. So it wasn't like deep South country. Like Drew, he can attest for that. <clears throat> but literally I called them and they were hanging up on me. And I was like, you know what? The next person I talked to, Sammy remembers this. The next person I talk to, I'm going to just go full on as deep into my accent as I can. So, Diana, let's let's role play it. So you pick it up. So ring, ring, say hello. Hello. Hi, Bob. Uh huh. Hey, Bob, this is Jesse. Uh, it looks like you uh, filled out this life insurance request here and I'm fixing to stop by your house here uh, tomorrow about uh, 3 p.m. Would that work for you? And what like, are you talking about? Exactly. So, <clears throat> but that was the accent I did. And I literally booked eight to 12 appointments within like 30 minutes. I was just like, why didn't I do this the last five and a half hours? I've been getting wrecked on the phones. I booked all my appointments in like 40 minutes, but it's like Diana is saying, guys, this is so important. You have to figure out what works. You've got to make the mistakes and learn from it. But one thing you will notice on the phones, and you guys can all probably agree, you like to hang out with people that make you feel comfortable. You like to hang out with people that have same interest, have same goals, maybe sound the same. So if someone picks up the phone, hey, hello, 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 maybe talk fast. Someone's talking, ah, this is Jesse. Am I going to call and be like, hey, Jesse, hey, this is Jesse. La, 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 la. No, because they're going to be so angry and like get shocked. Right. So we have to hit them and match their tonality and their pace. Use yeah. your ears to match what's going on with your phones. And when you're in the home, do it, too. And when you're working age leads, this is a nugget. Um, we I think we were listening to a podcast a long time ago and it said, the older the lead, slower you talk. I'm going to say that again. The older the lead, slower you talk. This is a two, three, five, seven, eight year old lead. We'll, pra we'll practice this. Or here, we'll flip it around here in a second because I want to hear your script for the tail end. Um, actually, I don't know if that'll help. Can you translate what you say into English? That's going to be a mission. Okay. I had so, a, I actually had a client yesterday who she wouldn't be able to sign with American Amicable. And I had to do the voiceover in English, then Spanish at the same time. And it was, it was such a mission. Um, but did but, you say yes or did she say see? Si? 
she would say C, sí, and I'm like, Senora, you have to say yes. <laughs> I was like, please, can you say yes? Because they need to hear you. There's, oh, you can do it. You see, every day we learn. Okay, here. So I can't speak Spanish, so this is not going to be helpful. I need someone else here. Let's let's role play English but real quick. We can do it. It's just I am very simple. I honestly, I try to connect <clears throat> with the clients a lot. Okay. Uh, I might so here, not be your bueno. typical agent. Oh, uh. So ring, ring. Bueno. That's what they say every time when I call and they speak Spanish. And I'm like, I don't, does that mean hello? If they're Mexican. <laughs> okay. So, bueno. No, they say bueno. Bueno. Okay. Hello. Go ahead. Bueno. No, Jesse, you're not going to talk in Spanish. All right, Laura, I need your help. <clears throat> <laughs> no. Okay, let's go. So, ring, ring. <laughs> bueno, Laura, you're supposed to say bueno. Okay. Are we going to do it in okay. Spanish? Yeah, we're going to do Spanish, Spanish and then we'll do English. Oh, okay. Okay, so I'm the client. Yeah, so ring, ring, you say hello. Hello. Bueno. Si, sí, bueno, Laura. Si, sí, quien habla? Laura, ¿cómo Who's te calling? encuentras? Mi nombre es Daina. Mi nombre es Daina Vargas. Soy la agente licenciada por el estado de Texas y la estoy llamando para ofrecerle o brindarle la información que usted nos pidió a través de el, la promoción de Facebook, por ejemplo. Ah, sí, sí. Quiero saber cuánto cuesta. Yes. Ah, eso me I, parece I perfecto. Eso me parece perfecto. Pero eh, pasamos por un proceso de calificación. Es necesario que le haga varias preguntas, ya que estos programas no se compran, sino que calificar para ellos basado en su edad y condición de salud. ¿Está bien si le hago varias preguntas? Sí, pero yo nada más quiero saber cuánto cuesta. Me encanta que, que quiera saber cuánto cuesta. Ahora, tenemos que pasar por el proceso. Para eso es que estoy haciendo mi llamada y mi trabajo es súper simple. Le hago unas preguntas en referencia a su condición de salud y de ahí pasamos a los precios. ¿Le parece bien? Ok. Uh, you're not going to even be able to say anything because you don't understand what I'm saying. No, but I mean, sure, sign me up. Come on over to the house. Um, I'll have my social security and my checkbook uh, ready. Uh, well, she was basically giving me the, the objection that she just wanted the, the yeah, price. They just so I was saying that's price. perfect. That's perfect. I would love to do that. But we have to go through the process of me asking you certain questions because this these programs, you don't buy them. You have to qualify for them based on your age and your medical condition. So is it okay if I ask a few questions that we can so we can find out exactly what will be comfortable for you to pay based on your budget. So that's what's, what it was basically saying. So um, that's, she was just giving me the objection of the price, which is very common. Okay, here. So I let's let's the hit the, the, the script in English. Josue, hopefully that was good enough. Um, there's a reason why every Spanish lead I have, I send to her because sure track record i think she's batting like 900 percent. so if she can get them on the phone it's a close um so if it's, if it's in spanish most likely yeah if it's in spanish and you guys speak english send it to diana or laura there you will close it for sure um next thing here so we'll do one we'll kind of run through that simple if you need to talk slow to kind of collect your bearings because i know you're used to doing this in, in uh, spanish so mm -hmm. ring ring hello jesse yeah the, uh who, who's this hi jesse i'm just gonna introduce myself really quick this is dana the medical underwriter and i'm just giving you a quick call in reference to the information re you requested about the life insurance programs here in the state of nevada okay okay i'm gonna be i'm gonna be really fast i just need to ask a few questions once again my name is dana and i'm just here to give you some information you requested it's your date of birth 11 12 1970 yeah that's me okay perfect hey and can i, I just get the quote you know I, yeah. I saw something online i just i just need some prices 
And I love that. I would love to give you a quote right away, but this is the thing. My job is super simple. I'm gonna be done really fast. I just need to ask a few medical questions because these programs are based on your age and your health. So in order for me to know if you would even qualify for the program, I need to ask a few questions. Is that okay with you, Jesse? That's fair. Okay, perfect. So now, Jesse, are you a smoker or non-smoker? Uh, non-smoker. Is there any medical conditions I should be aware of? No, you know, I used to take a, a bunch of medication, but now I don't. I lost a bunch of weight. All right, that's perfect. So I need to, by any chance, do you remember the name of those medications? Because it's really important for me to know exactly what would be on your record. Because once again, we're trying to just qualify you for some program today. We're not even going to know if you're going to qualify for it. But in order for me to guide myself in the right direction, I need to know a little bit more of information. You know, I'm I'm actually at work right now. I'm pretty busy. Um, can you call me back? Yeah, I would love to call you back, but I'm actually super busy. Every day we get a lot of calls with clients that would like to get insured. So I'll be done really fast. I just need a few more questions for you and then we'll be done and then we can just schedule another call. Is that okay with you? Yeah. Um, you know, how do I know you're you're not someone trying to just rip me off? Oh, I, I love that you asked me that because I get that question every day. Actually, I pay every month for this page that they verify my information every month as a state licensing, uh, state license broker. So I'm gonna go ahead and right now send it to you over a text message if that's okay with you. And you're gonna be able to see all of my information on that page. Is that okay, Jesse? That's perfect. Hey, um, in regards towards that, you know, I don't really feel comfortable giving you information about my health. <clears throat> Oh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. But in order for me to know if you would even qualify for some type of coverage today, or not even to be qualified to know what company we can even apply for, I need to know some type of information about your health. Now, remember, this is to protect your family. This is the reason why you're doing this because you want to leave some type of uh, financial protection to your family in case something happens to you. So I'm sure your health is not the priority in terms of getting you qualified. It's your family. So is it okay if I ask a few questions about your health in order to know which program we could apply for? Yeah, absolutely. Is this free? No, it's definitely not free. We can always adjust your budget. Uh, once again, this is based on your age and your health. So we're going to go over a few questions. If it's by any chance you don't feel comfortable with the price, we can always look for more options. I'm a veteran. Um, I was told, you, you know, single objection there I know, but guys, do you notice something? She's got a common route. A common route. Almost every objection she handles it. I'd love to help you with that. I'd love to do that. Absolutely. That's a fantastic question. She disarms them. And then she explains why. You know, we can adjust the price. This is based off of your age and your medications. I like to say age, health, and medications. Um, but guys, like, do you notice it? She's not getting stuck. And I did a video the other day about crippling words. You notice there's only one time, I think it was like the last time where I got her a little bit good. It was, but it was like seven objections in and she finally went, uh, 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 like she paused out. Right. But she knows what to say. You know, no problem, Diana. I would love to help you get that information now in regards towards that. So I know what to better qualify you for what's going on with your health, age, health, medication, or what's going on with your medications and your health. Are you currently taking medications for X, Y, and Z, right? You're just going into it. You're leading them back to where you need to go. Right. So and I got a bunch of notes here. Your script, honestly, it makes a lot more sense because it's relatable. You connect with them and it doesn't feel like you're ever applying sales pressure and you connect with them, alleviating them. And, you know, I think you said this in one of them. I'm not even sure if this will be good or if you can qualify. It's that takeaway that's so powerful, guys. So if you miss that, I'll give it to you again. I'm not even sure if you can get qualified or I'm not sure if this will be a good fit for you. 
you'll get qualified based off of your what? On your age and your health. There we go. Guys, and you just lead them back to where you need to go. Bam, questions, 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 and we're going to close it down. But I appreciate your time, Diana. Go crush it on your appointment. I know we'll see you on the leaderboard. Guys, keep an eye on her. If you got questions, feel free to reach out to her. She's super helpful. Um, I'm stoked that you're here working with the agency, and you'll be able to be a helpful, um, I, don't, I mean, just helpful and awesome. Just keep doing what you're doing. And I'm very confident next year you'll be getting your red jacket. So keep up the hard work, um, and we'll see you guys later. Have a wonderful day. Bye.